Someone once told me that if you do something for 10,000 hours, you become an expert. Well, Jamie and I have been building houses for 20 years and we did the math, that's about 40,000 hours. There's a lot of things when I look back at the first year of our building where I question, what were we thinking? 20 years, man, how old are these guys? You're good, hey, button up the shirt there, Slouch. Your plugs out or in? Out? No, in, in. Is that better? So we're gonna tell a few quick stories about some things that have changed for us over the years so that you can have a little bit of an insight into what it's like to be a builder. You know, I mean, obviously we knew everything about building when we started, duh. I mean, I read my code book for like three months before I took the test. So obviously I was well educated. Yeah, as a builder year one, you're completely stunned and dumbfounded when things go wrong. Like the subcontractor doesn't show up the day he said he was going to, or say you get some cabinets, right? And you open the boxes and like half of the cabinets are destroyed when you open the boxes. Shocker, right? Fast forward 20 years, we just don't seem so surprised anymore when stuff goes wrong. You know, we kind of almost expect things to go wrong. And then we're almost like surprised when things just go right and go smooth. You know what really wigs me out these days is when stuff goes really smooth because I'm thinking, man, the next day is going to be twice as bad. I wonder if in another 20 years I'll feel like I was an idiot today. <laughs> man, I don't even need 20 years to know that these guys are already idiots. What do you mean I can't get a delivery for two weeks? I, th I need this stuff today. I, I didn't know I needed to call two weeks ahead. Nowadays, we're like, okay, you can have that for me in only 90 to 120 days? Sweet, I'll take it, sign me up. All right, let's change subject for a second. Let's talk about trucks. Everybody loves trucks. So on year one of our construction endeavors, my main goal was to make some money so I could buy a cool four-wheel drive truck, right? So I could ride my girlfriend around, have fun, look cool. Let's fast forward to year 20 of our construction endeavors. Well, if I wanted to ride someone in my truck right now, there's no way that could happen. Yeah, sorry, babe, I can't take the kids today. Uh, there's no room in my truck. It's all full of tools, so. And sometimes when I ride to work with Jamie, I open his passenger door and I'm just like, oh my gosh, there is so much crap in there. Yeah, sometimes Jamie actually makes me drive him around in his own truck. When you got that new truck, you clean it out every weekend, take your tools out and set them in the garage. But over time, you just quit caring and you leave all your junk in there and you just never wash it again. Uh, most crap race right now. <laughs> Let's rewind to year one again, okay? Let's talk about tools. I remember as an 18 year old, first year building, walking through Lowe's, seeing the tool department with the big sign, Tool World. It all seems so magical looking at all the brand new shiny tools. Wow, I'm feeling mesmerized by it. I remember thinking, man, I wish I could buy all these tools. That would be so amazing. I'd be so happy if I could do that. Fast forward 20 years, now I walk through Lowe's just about every day. I look at the tool department and I think to myself, I don't think there's a single tool in here that I would actually buy. Does anybody else find it weird that Lowe's doesn't carry Stiletto or Milwaukee or Makita? or Stabila. So I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if we just became tool snobs or if the quality of the tools just kept going downhill so much that we don't want them anymore. Now Lowe's is good at some stuff. Don't think that we're boo-boo and everybody. I've got some good friends at Lowe's that I really love. Anyway, every now and then I still go out on a limb and I'll buy a new tool at Lowe's off the shelf. And just to confirm that it is a piece of junk and usually they are, but the good thing is you just take it right back and they give you your money back. All right, next let's move on to the topic of installing and finishing wood. On year one, we were like, oh, let's get this tongue and groove ceiling put up. So we go in, we bang it out. We got this monster ceiling put in. Then we look at each other and we're like, hmm, I guess we're gonna have to set the ladders back up to put the polyurethane finish on that upside down. Uh, yeah, when the polyurethane actually dries into your armpit hair, it's really painful to get it out, okay? <laughs> Fast forward to year 20, we got our wood delivered to the shop. It gets sanded, sanding sealer, poly, sanded, poly, sanded, poly, all before the board even makes it to the job site. Man, back when we started, we thought one coat of oil-based polyurethane was fantastic. 
but then over time we realized, man, I think it even looks worse with one coat because the grain raises up and it feels so rough. So now we do three coats. I hope you can take this and think about where you've come from, how far you've come in the last 20 years, if you've been doing anything the last 20 years, and you'll probably get a really good laugh. Thanks for watching our video today. We'll see you next time. It's gotta make them like 50 or something.